Hey, what's up guys? It's Tom and today I'm going to make a quick video about the Benchmade proper and why I think it is the gateway knife into the slip joint world. So let's just get right into it. So this is the Benchmade proper aka the Benchmade 319. As you can see, it is in OD green and it also comes in a maroon G10. I really, really like OD green, especially my Carta. So this was kind of a no brainer for me. The price is about $120 on these, so it's not going to kill you in terms of, I don't know, an American made knife and slip joints that are at pretty good quality are around the $150 range. So, you know, it's kind of a bargain really when you think about it, um, especially if you want to just try one out. They're pretty easy to, uh, to sell since they're a very popular knife. Um, but before we get ahead of ourselves there, let's just go over the specs real quick. Uh, there, this is a 2.86 inch blade and the steel is S30V and we're going to get into that in a second and how I'm so bored of the steel conversation. But yeah, 2.86 inch blade, so that's going to be legal in a lot of places. The overall length is going to be 6.7 inches. And then the closed length is 3.85 inches. So in terms of slip joints, it's definitely on the larger side, but that's actually why I think a lot of people will really like it coming from the modern folder world. Uh, also, I wanted to say shout out to Scoopy Loops. Thanks, John, for hooking me up with this bead. I think it goes really, really well with this OD green micarta. Um, yeah, so this is the S30V blade steel and I don't know I I know so many guys really care about blade steels I'm not one of those people my day-to-day -day needs are really just cutting paper and small little EDC tasks so I'm not really too wrapped up in all that stuff uh, my you know <laughs> most of my slip joints are like 1095 so it's it's a steel that kind of gets dull easily but also sharpens super easily and conversely, this stays sharp longer and it's harder to sharpen. So it's kind of like six of one, to be honest. But either way, if you're interested in blade steels, this is a very beloved blade steel. And this knife is made in America. I don't remember if I mentioned that already. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the, there's quite a few, you know, people talking about Benchmade's quality concerns and we're going to go over that in a minute but I wanted to uh, kind of go over the good stuff first you know I will say this knife was crazy sharp out of the box there's definitely people that think that the the grind on this is not thin enough which I disagree with wholeheartedly because it's fine there's not really I don't know if you made it any thinner it would be like a razor blade so it looks way thicker than it is in pictures it definitely is a slicer so there's no complaints on my end for that um, I really cut a lot of paper and stuff and this knife has not had any problems there's definitely a lot of my modern folders which I'm gonna show you in a second and kind of explain why I love this knife that you know, they're a lot thicker and they're not good at cutting foam core and stuff like that, which is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But again, we'll get into that in a second. So with this larger size comes good ergos. I, uh, I wear 2XL gloves in mechanics, which I didn't ever think my hands were that big, but I really, uh, I don't know. I don't know if their sizing got weird, but yeah, 2XL. I used to wear XL, so I don't know whatever that means to you guys, but yeah. So this fits really well in my hand. Um, there's a little bit of jimping up here, which I don't really know what you would ever need that for because you're not going to be chopping a tree down with this, that's for sure. But it is a really durable knife, and again, it's, it's solid. So I honestly, I love this knife. There are a couple of things about it that I don't love. And I'm gonna go over that right now, as a matter of fact. So in terms of slip joints, the thing that everyone talks about is walk and talk, meaning the snap uh, versus, you know, the sound and the feel of it. So this has absolutely terrible walk and talk. You can see it doesn't really snap. You have to kind of push it through the whole 
way of travel until the end, which isn't a big deal at all because it doesn't affect the quality of the knife or the functionality at all. It's more of just like style points. You know what I mean? So there's not really much else to say in terms of bad quality other than like this back spring isn't flush, but you're not really gonna get a flush back spring um, from too many people that, you know, that don't make custom stuff. But this one is a little bit more than I would like to see. You can kind of see it good there, yeah. So I, you know, again, it doesn't affect the knife functionality at all, but in terms of spending 120 bucks and grading a slip joint on style points, those are two little dings. But yeah, this, this walk and talk's not great, but it doesn't matter. Um, so let's do a little comparing. So here's a few friends that I wanted to <laughs> bring to the party here. And kind of from left to right here, we have, you know, the more higher end production modern folders all the way to our gateway knife and then back into the higher end uh, custom slip joint. So from left to right, this is the Strider PT. Um, this one was just black with a stonewash titanium and I had it Cerakoted and reground from Josh from Razor Edge Knives. And again, that was a pretty thick blade stock, so I wanted it much thinner so I could slice stuff. This is a Spyderco Delica with um, Casey Lynch titanium scales. And then this is one of the all-time great knives, the Ontario Rat 2, 30 bucks. Can't go wrong with that. And then here is our Benchmade Proper. Here is the Victorinox Cadet. This is my all-time favorite knife, especially for EDC. And you can see this is pretty much like a razor blade. And that's why this is the greatest slicer out of all of them, because it's the thinnest blade. And if you are using your knives to cut stuff, then you want your blade to be thin. So, for, you know, for EDC stuff at least. This is a GEC uh, Tom's Choice, and I recently picked this up. Sorry for the fingerprints and all the tape and stuff. This is, uh, yeah, Tom's Choice, Sheep's Foot, really nice knife. And then this is a Jared Ozer solitude so again production high-end production production lower budget production um the gateway knife and then the swiss army cadet which is you know mass made tons of these in the world um, a little bit different here with the uh production this would almost be you know just somewhere in the middle between something that's so mass produced and custom but mass produced or not these swiss army knives are perfect every single time so if you want something that's really really well built this is your guy um, but yeah so then gecs these are pretty hard to get and in terms of price point let's just go across as well so this is going to be somewhere in the 320 dollars range before you do any customization this is going to be somewhere along the lines of like 50 bucks, this is like 30 bucks, 120, uh, about 30. This is gonna cost you about 160 on the secondary market if you can't snag one initially when they drop. And then these can go, oh man, anywhere from like 700 bucks table price to just about two grand plus on the secondary market. So it's kind of the whole gamut and you know, when I got into knives, I really was into super fast deploying stuff, which is always fun and all that stuff. But, you know, as you get into it, you kind of get bored of the same titanium frame lock kind of design all the time, which is why I had this Cerakoted anyway, just so it was a little bit different. Plus, I just really wanted a blacked out knife, but that's for another video. <laughs> and then, you know, you have your, you have your kind of like beater knives here. And you really can't go wrong with this. That's a Casey Lynch clip, by the way. Um, yeah, you can't really go wrong with these guys, especially for the money. And, um, you know, but that's why I'm comparing all these to this knife, which meets in the middle. Because this knife has 
the kind of heritage of the Benchmade brand in terms of like the look and the feel, but it also does go into uncharted territory with them for the slip joint thing. So I don't know, I feel like if you guys are really thinking about picking up one of these GECs or you've been seeing them on Instagram and you're like, oh, I don't know what that's about. You can see the difference in the walk and talk too, by the way, that I was mentioning before. Sorry, the camera's a little wiggly there. You can see that walk and talk kind of just snaps. And this one doesn't have a very strong pull. It's probably like a four or five. Um, that's another thing if you guys are not into slip joints that people will talk about is what's the pull. So a strong pull is gonna be closer to a 10 and it's gonna be very hard to open. It might be uh, you know, like a nail ripping kind of thing, which is not fun. I don't enjoy that at all. This is like a three or a four. So it's really light pull. It's very easy to open. It's not gonna ever shake out or open in your pocket. So you don't have to worry about that. But you know, I'm pretty happy with the light pull knife because who wants to uh, who wants to struggle opening a knife? These are these are also really light pull. They don't have a half stop though. It's just one stop at the end. Um, and you know, the Benchmade does have a half stop, which is nice. And that's kind of a safety thing. So you won't accidentally close it on your hand. So that's really convenient. And uh, yeah, you know, a lot of the higher end stuff pretty much all has a half stop. So it's nice that it has those features in terms of just kind of having your bases covered with that. But yeah, I would say if you're thinking about a slip joint, pick one of these up, whatever your poison is, uh, OD green, micarta or maroon g10 i think you're going to be happy either way and there's even some uh some pivots on the back that you can use uh sorry some screws on the back to adjust the pivot and stuff like that if you want to tweak it or take it apart and see how it works i haven't taken this one apart and i don't really intend to i might add a little oil but i'm not going to take it apart to do that i feel like leaving stuff alone is usually the best way to go <laughs> in my experience so yeah, so I hope you dug the video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler and I would love to chat with you guys about it more. Um, let me know what else you guys wanna see in any future videos and I hope this made sense. And I hope that you guys pick one of these up and you get into slip joints because there's way more out there than just $150 Kaisers that get super boring super quick. These. Uh, these slip joints are really cool and they have a lot of character. These are made in America by hand on really old machines. You could see the quality here. Everything is nice and flush. Super, super well built. You can see Jared's stuff, of course, is really, really well made. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot to love about these slip joints. And not everything needs to be a super fast deploying, crazy high speed, low drag knife. So. I hope you dug, I hope you dug the video and uh yeah see you guys next time